Hey guys, what it do? It's your boy Supreme Uchiha, the God. Man, we talking about the one and only, the main protagonist. The annoying little shit that we, I think we all hated at some point, Aaron Yeager. Now, man, I just want to say that I love Aaron Yeager, bro. He he became one of my favorite protagonists, uh, surprisingly, because the very first time I watched Attack on Titan, I think it was 2013 when he first came out, it debuted, and there was so much hype for the shit. And, like, I was like, yo, this guy is annoying as shit, bro. Like, he don't deserve no Mikasa, bro. Like, what is he doing? I, I still don't think he deserves no Mikasa because, like, come on, man. Mikasa, best girl. But at the same time, well, actually, Historia. Historia is probably best girl. I ain't gonna lie. Shout out Historia. Historia and Mikasa. But Mikasa is above, obviously, because, come on, man. But... You know, I really, I found him, like, super annoying. And it wasn't until I rewatched all of Attack on Titan, uh, like, literally a few weeks ago. I feel like two months ago, maybe. I don't know. Whenever the, my first Attack on, Vi Attack on Titan video was made, I think I just finished uh, all of Attack on Titan when I made that. So, that's when I did it. And, bro, I just got to say, man, bro, if you, oh, man, Aaron Yeager's growth is phenomenal. Because, again, when we meet him, he's this over-abrasive, over-aggressive, like, it, not ignorant, but, like, just childish bro he's just very my opinion must be right you know blah 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 fight the titans fight the titan i want to fight and he always had that hunger to fight and it was kind of like hmm because he 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 never liked the idea of humanity hiding behind the wall he thought that like we were like sheep we're like cattle and I, I love that ideology you know what i'm saying i think when i was younger i didn't even pay attention to the fact that he had that, that ideology i was just more annoyed by him screaming all the damn time and crying all the damn time and needing being kidnapped all the damn time and just and just being useless all the damn time so I, that's what i was annoyed by so i didn't even uh, i didn't even pay attention to nothing else to be honest i was just like man this guy annoying as shit but Rewatching that man, you just see it from a different perspective, a more mature perspective. Now, I know some of you 15, 16, 14, 13 year old motherfuckers already see shit like those. Like, but come on, man, we grew up in a different era. We was watching different type content. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I never really liked annoying, screaming characters. Maybe it's a Naruto PTSD. I don't know. It could be. It could be from all that Naruto screaming. Believe it! Even though that's not even what he says in Japanese. You know what I'm saying? He says some inaudible shit. But. Look, I rest my case. But Aaron, man, like just rewatching it, it, it blows your mind really because you see a person that really wants freedom. You know, and kind of selfishly, but not really. He just, it's like, I think it's like, you know the way you look at society, even like our own society in real life sometimes, and you're like, are we really living? Like, are we really, if you think about it, like you wake up, go to a nine to five, come back home, tired, eat, sleep, repeat. And you hype yourself up for these two days you get off in order to actually enjoy life. And you can't even fully enjoy it because one more day later, you can't sleep late because you got work the next day, right? It's like a rat race. We're stuck in this maze and like we, we consistently have to beat this maze. And at the end of that tunnel, we get a little snack and that snack is the weekend. Right, and everybody's hyped up for the weekend after work on a Friday. Everybody's super excited. Oh my god, I can't wait to go up, I can't go wait to go out and have fun with my friends, and blah 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 blah. Right, because the working hours are kind of ridiculous. Uh, for the most part, you, you spend most of your life in school, first of all, in a desk, right, being trained to accept sitting down in a room for eight hours. Notice that school is around eight hours, right? You go to school at nine, you leave it around half three, half four, whatever. So you adapt to that lifestyle, right? There's only two lifestyles that schools really present you for, and that's uh, work, working nine to five or jail. Same situation, a bell rings, lunchtime. If your teacher says you ain't moving, you ain't moving, right? Some teachers keep you slightly later after school, some keep you slightly later for lunch, etc., etc., etc. This type of thing is power, right? You listen to the man. And our society is built like that, right? So, Again, if you look at real life, we're in a kind of, obviously, not in the same situation as goddamn Attack on Titan. Come on, ain't nobody want to live in Attack on Titan world. Come on, man. That's the only fantasy. If motherfuckers be like, I'll be Naruto because I can just be in some village nobody heard of. You ain't do not want to be in no Attack on Titan town, city, anywhere near that village. You know what I'm saying? Because it's suicide. But it's the same principle. And I think maybe that's where the author might have got his inspiration from. Because if you look at reality, it is that kind of thing where you're stuck doing this cycle. 
and you, you're supposed to just be satisfied at the fact that you get crumbs, right? Or at the fact that you eat, at the fact that you're alive, right? And maybe there's more to life than that, right? And I suppose that's where millionaires and billionaires and stuff like those come out from because they, they're the people that usually, usually or often, sometimes have a different mindset and want to change the status quo for themselves. And this is very important for themselves. Uh, and that's where, you know, anomalies come from, a.k.a. Titan shifters, we're going to say, right? At least that's my interpretation of what the story is trying to tell us in a way, in a different way, but in a way. Um, it obviously also presents us with a completely different perspective on war and how it's very easy to, to, to paint somebody else as the villain. But from their perspective, it's also just as easy to see y'all as the villains. So that's the thing about Attack on Titan. I think that it does really, really well. Uh, I know a little bit about the manga, a bit past the, you know, where where the, the anime ended off. But obviously, I'm not going to spoil it. And please don't spoil it for anybody in the comment section. Now, back to Eren. Why this is important for Eren, I suppose, is that I suppose my, my realization on that is probably why I fuck with Eren so much uh, when I rewatch it. Season 1, Eren is still, for the most part, really annoying. But at the same time, he's also brave. He's, he, he really cares and he's selfless to a fault. He's selflessly selfish, if that makes sense, right? So when we first meet him again, he's this brazen kid just ready to fight. And Mikasa always has to, uh, like, essentially save him. And save him, she does. And the thing about the relationship, I suppose I'm going to start with kind of early, uh, early, early Aaron. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they first meet. Like, that's that just proves and showcases that this guy a, is fearless to a fault again. And that's kind of the contrast between him and Jean. Jean, Jean, or Jean. Love Jean or Jean, depending on how you want to pronounce it. But, um, you know, I think it's it's the contrast where he he's so fearless, no matter who he's up against, that... It's, it's scary almost, right? He he sees two guys trying to ki like uh, 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 rob Mikasa and kidnap her. And automatically, he just stabs and kills two men without even thinking. Just boom, boom. And he even encourages Mikasa to do the same, like kill this guy. These guys are monsters. They're not human. And this is his sight. He views evil as beastly, as, you know, this inhumane creature and this is where it's important because uh, when he finds out about the the uh, colossal titan and you know the rest of the gang bertrand and the guys and how they were actually you know and not even just bertrand mainly especially rayner because that's somebody he befriended and became very why is there such a freaking delay close to I hate Apple, man. Jesus Christ. I'm just not going to have video in this in this video. I'm sorry, guys, because my video is absolutely tripping balls. But basically, he befriends them, and it's, it's kind of like, wow, evil people aren't often so black and white. That's kind of his realization and his character growth. Uh, later down the line, it's like, these are people I laughed with, hugged, cried with, fought with. And it turns out they're the ones that killed my parents, my mother. They're the ones that caused hundreds of thousands and thousands of people's misery. Why? What did we do? You know what I'm saying? He begins to question things. He begins to realize that shit, his view of pure evil may not be 100% correct. Because it changes once you know the culprit. It's easy to say that guy is evil or that girl is evil if you don't know who that is. It's a faceless person, right? But once you know that person and then you find out that they're evil, you're like, it can't be. That's my friend. And that's the beauty of it, man. That's the beauty of Attack on Titan and what it does. Yo, this is just an Aaron discussion board. It's just mainly focusing on Aaron and his character. Excuse the lack of order, etc. I kind of just be making videos like those, you know what I'm saying? But basically, man, again, like with Aaron, bro, what I really loved is one of my favorite moments, if not my favorite moment by Aaron. No, my second favorite moment by Aaron. My, my first one, I'm going to talk about it later, but my favorite moment early on is when... Um, 
when Iron Man gets grabbed by a Titan and is about to get eaten, and he just remembers my mom got eaten like those. And this guy is, you have to you have to imagine, right? And this is the beauty of it. Again, like this guy was always riled up, fearless, brave, all of this shit. And when he finally had a chance to fight the Titan, which he's been wanting, waiting for for years, because his mama got eaten right in front of him and he wanted to fight. He joined the Soviet Corp for the reason to fight. He, he pushed everybody else to fight. He was like, we can't be weak. We got to fight. Leadership qualities. When he came face to face to a Titan, he got absolutely obliterated and lost his limb. And he was like, how? How? Because he really, he felt like, I'm the protagonist. How is this happening to me? You know what I'm saying? Because normally when we watch animes, read mangas, whatever, our protagonist is always special. And that's the beauty of Eren. He's, he's not. He's really not. And it's, it's, it's what makes him special. If that makes sense. And when his leg is turned and he's like, how, how did this happen? And he's about to give up and everything. And he's like, I, I didn't even get to kill one Titan. That's what he's mad at himself. Like, I ain't even kill one of them. And I'm going to die. I'm going to die like this. I can't accept that. I cannot accept that. What happens? As soon as Iron Man gets grabbed and is about to get eaten, that's his best buddy you know what i'm saying that's the person he grew up with alongside mikasa like nah fam not today not in my house not in my face he bro my dude has one leg hops on that bitch bro who jumps to the rescue into the titan's mouth holds that bitch open and yanks with all power, I think you know when adrenaline kicks in, boy, you don't even feel no pain. With all might of a god, yanks this boy Armin out of that bitch, bro. Says not today, not on my watch. No way, am I not gonna kill a single titan and also let my bestie die? Not gonna happen, bro. So he yanked that nigga out, man, and he he fell in him damn self, bro. But he was like, ah, oh. and he fell in there, and he was just thinking like, wow. So all, all of the struggles I had, even when he had the, the training gear and the 3D gear and he couldn't use it and how that hurt him. He was like, how, how can I not do this? Like, I've been so riled up for this. Like, and we find out that he was sabotaged on purpose and it turns out he's actually freaking amazing at it. Makes the top 10. And all these moments and all these things he went through, all his fights with John, Gene, and, 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 you know, his aggressiveness towards Mikasa sometimes because she's overprotective and overbearing. And even the moments with, 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 uh, with goddamn Rainer, like, it's like, all of this is just gone. But no. No. Mm -mm. Not today, man. And he transforms. And his hatred for Titans is so strong. My dude didn't even know he can control a Titan. But his will. His will ensured that the Titan was being controlled. And first person he saved after that, Mikasa, baby. Perfect timing. Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. And it, it makes it the more beautiful when he, he discovers. Not, not beautiful per se, but... The more heartbreaking when he discovered that Annie, again, somebody he looked up to, who was considered the strongest. And supposedly, they fought against Mikasa. She fought against Mikasa. I'm pretty sure Mikasa whooped that booty. But, <laughs> supposedly, there was a legendary tale hidden in the mist that they did. They did throw these hands. You know, I feel like one of the trainers probably stopped that fight. But, you know, it's more tragic. And he, he, he found himself humanizing these monsters. Because he found out Annie... Is the Titan. And he wouldn't believe it. When Iron Man said he was like, nah, 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 you tripping, man. Annie, nah, she fought with us. She cried with us. She starved with us. Nah, 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 nah. She ain't crying, but like, she she been with us. No way. No way. Can't be Annie, bro. Turns out he was Annie. He still couldn't believe it. The reason why Annie had the opportunity to encase herself was because he didn't want to believe that somebody he knows would do such a thing. 
And he broke him. He tore him apart. He's screaming and bitching and shit. He just died down. The more reality sunk in, the more life beat and punched on him. The more he lost hope. The more he lost that spark, that energy, that zeal, that youth. And he just became such a real character, bro. And, you know, and that's the thing about it as well, because early, when, especially when he first became a Titan, he realized that he was just like, put it all on me. Put all your faith in me. I will do this by myself. Me. Right? And he begins to slowly realize that maybe that's not the answer. And when he relied on teammates, he lost teammates. You know, that's the, when he teamed up with Levi. And he relied on all the people that he was training that, that, you know, were keeping him. He was like, I can do this by myself. But he was like, you know what? Let me trust my teammates. And they died. So he went the opposite. He was like, no, 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 no. I got to do this by myself. And he was flopping. He didn't realize there was a fine balance. Those moments when you have to do it solo and those moments you have to work together. And those moments where you have to rely on a team. And Levi tells him this. is like, you going fighting might have not changed anything. But it also might have. You never know if it's the right or wrong answer until it already happened. But you just got to make your decision and live with it. Because Levi also left, left it to his homies and they died. If you don't know, there's a, a, a novel by Levi. Like, and there's also an OVM, I'm pretty sure. Amazing. Phenomenal. You got to check it out. And it's just like, wow, bro. Like, this is the character's growth. You really see it and feel it emotionally. Even when he's not really the main character in season two. I think Historia and the Amir are mainly the main characters in season two. But it's still, you're still seeing everything about him. His growth, his feelings, and just, it's wild, bro. He gets to a point in season three, I think it's early season three, or late season three, I'm not sure, but uh, excuse me if I get the seasons wrong, but this, how it happens should be around the right order. But basically, he gets to a point where he gives up. He's like, I can't do shit. I'm too weak. Like, I don't have the sauce. I tried to rely on my teammates. They flopped. I tried to rely on myself. I flopped. I can't do this. And it, it's until... And this is my favorite moment. When Mikasa says, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And they have this beautiful moment. And he looks at Mikasa. And he's like, No, I will never... I can't allow myself to lose her. I can't allow her to be lost. By any means. For her... I'll do anything for her. Even if I don't have power, I will find it. I will somehow manifest it. And I will always be there to put the scarf on you. And that was such a beautiful moment. Such a beautiful moment. I'm really afraid of putting any footage just because of copyright. But just imagine it. Just use your imagination. Ooh, see the visuals. <laughs> it's a beautiful moment, man. And... He unlocks a brand new power of the founding titan that he didn't even know he had. And he controlled all the small titans to attack. And he saved and he saved a lot of people because of that. It's beautiful. It's freaking beautiful. You know what I'm saying? And that for me is, you know, I, I know I didn't cover absolutely every little details. But I didn't really want the video to be like 40 minutes long or 2 hours long. Because I could talk for days. But that's why I like Aaron, man. The fact that he grows and he learns and he thinks and he contemplates and he argues and he fights with himself, with his friends. And his, his ideology is challenged. Because people like Naruto, his ideology is never truly challenged. Everyone just follows his ideology and accepts it. In Attack on Titan, a lot of people dispute his ideology. Mikasa don't fuck with it. Jean don't fuck with it. They understand it, but they don't fuck with it. And those that do still go against it because they have their own ideologies. Toguno Jutsu don't be working in this bitch. Motherfuckers die in this bitch. And that's why I really fuck with Aaron because he was brazen and strong and powerful. But he realized how weak and, in, and insignificant he is. He was willing to give himself up to Historia because he was like... 
I'm useless anyway. And this power belongs to you. You you take it. I can't do shit. And his story I had to slap the shell. Boy, get over yourself. We can't repeat the cycle. We can't repeat the fact that these guys are cursed by my grand great grandfather. They're cursed to follow his will and keep peace, even if it means the death of all of us. Even if it means the destruction and death of every person in the city. You can break that curse. Break that freaking curse. You know what I'm saying? And he's crying and he's mourning, bro. Because he's he really doesn't know what to do. He really doesn't have the answers. He doesn't have the way. His will isn't enough. You know what I'm saying? And that's the beauty of Aaron, bro. Those he feels like a fully fledged person. Not just not an icon, not an idol. You know, if you look at like a BTS member, they seem perfect, inhuman, flawless. You look at Aaron, you don't see that. You look at Luffy, you see this happy-go-lucky, powerful person with a strong ideology that attracts everybody. Aaron attracts everybody, or a lot of people. But he gets betrayed by those people. He gets hurt by those people. He hurts those people. And that's what I really fuck with Aaron. I think he's one of the most humane characters in literature. And he's in a world that assaults his every fiber and being. His ideologies are tested consistently. His decisions have consequences. Lasting effects from every decision and that's the beauty of Aaron man I fuck with Aaron it's been your boy Supreme Chihita God make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe I'm out